I can't say that I'm shocked, y'all, but I am disappointed. I'm disappointed because, to me, Nathaniel Hackett, he's the ultimate scapegoat for this. Nathaniel Hackett got fired because he had to be fired. Russell Wilson is tethered to this team for another three years based upon his guaranteed money. But Nathaniel Hackett wasn't the worst of problems. Russell Wilson was the worst of problems. Nathaniel Hackett is an offensive mind. He was with Aaron Rodgers the last two years when Aaron Rodgers won MVP and MVP. There is no plausible nor probable way that Nathaniel Hackett got this bad this quick. No, just doesn't happen. He may be a bad head coach, but this was a bad offensive football team. And Nathaniel Hackett is an offensive mind. This has much more to do with Russell Wilson than it does Nathaniel Hackett. He fell on the sword. Think about this for a second. The worst decision Nathaniel Hackett made all season was the best decision he made all season. Go back to week one, Seattle Seahawks, fourth and five, game on the line. He decides to kick a field goal instead of leaving it in Russell Wilson's hands. Well, now retroactively, you all realize had Russell Wilson attempted that fourth and five pass, it would have been drastically worse more than likely than that field goal attempt. His worst decision, his most criticized decision was likely his best decision. And that summarizes the tenure for Nathaniel Hackett in Denver, taking a blame that he did not necessarily deserve. I feel bad for Nathaniel Hackett. It had to happen, but I'm disappointed that it did. Shady, I'm coming to you, though. Did the Broncos make the right decision Firing Nathaniel Hackett. Absolutely, absolutely. First of all, you named this one thing. There was a lot of different uh, scenarios that happened that played out where he made bonehead head coaching decisions, mm -hmm. right? So now I get it. He's a first year coach. It happens. He's a rookie. But I got to see this type of fight, right? When I, when I look at other coaches, Dan Campbell, he had some bad years. Like, okay, they're probably going to fire him. But when you look to fire a coach, it's like, why would, you, why would we bring you back? What would make us bring you back to this team? And one thing is they fight. They fight everybody hard. They play well. You can see something. You can see them getting better and better and better. But the Broncos, I don't see that. Nothing. So I think that the, the biggest keys was, okay, the, the head coach wasn't doing well, and then our starting quarterback didn't do well. Now, the difference is one guy has $161 million <laughs> guarantee, so you, he can't move on. And then you look at the team, they have, he's supposed to be an offensive guy, right? They're not. They're, they're, they're the worst offense in football, averaging 15 points a game. You can't win like that. So get him out of there. His time's go. His time is to go. I don't like, I mean, like, everything you said is fair, but I mean, like, is the world fair? Like, I mean, like, <laughs> I, am I supposed to feel that sorry? Right. But first of all, Nathaniel Hackett's gonna, like, he's getting paid handsomely to, to not work anymore. Like, if you don't make it through your first year, you want to talk about the size of that buyout? Like, that's my dream in life, <laughs> is to get paid to go away. So first of all, and then, yeah, like, Russell Wilson can't leave. That's the way this league is structured. Sorry, it's not fair. I, I, don't, I mean, I, I'm not going to spend too much time feeling bad for you. You're right, but there's other things that point to this as well. Okay, Russell Wilson struggling and the offense being terrible is how we got here. But think about all the bumps along the way. Like, okay, even if the field goal in week one was the right call in retrospect, what about, like, needing to hire a game manager midseason because yeah. you're – bungling these situations so frequently your home crowd is counting the play clock for you so that you stop incurring delay of games like all that stuff happened and then we get to the frustrating part where the season is obviously lost you've got defensive players screaming at your quarterback on the sideline you've got your backup quarterback trying to start fights with your offensive line yesterday on Christmas <laughs> because they don't seem to oh, care that Russell Wilson's getting beat up like the vibes on this team are terrible it points to losing culture in addition to not having a good offense. And so when you look at all of that and also acknowledge the unfair truth that you can't cut Russell Wilson, this was bound to happen, and I think it's totally justified. All great points. Joy, where do you stand? Broncos making the right decision firing Hackett. Yes, they, they made the right decision. It's the decision they had to make, and it was likely going to happen if it didn't happen after that embarrassment yesterday on Christmas. It would have happened at the end of the season. Everything that you guys said is true. All the points you've made are true. At the end of the day, he wasn't really a risky hire for a first-time head coach. Mm -hmm. He had 13 seasons of NFL experience. He was an offensive coordinator for eight of those nine of the previous nine seasons. Had top five scoring offenses yeah. in Jacksonville and Green Bay. And he helped three teams across two organizations get to the conference championship game. So this was a very safe first-time hire. But being a head coach is very different than being a coordinator. What you brought up and what you brought up, bad vibes. It wasn't just that Russell Wilson was, ba was bad. It wasn't just that the offense was bad. They had no fight. You didn't look at this team and think, man, like they're really struggling, <laughs> but they're going to push back. Like when right. you watch the Texans 
Right. You're like, they're, right. they don't have enough, but they're going to make you earn that win. They're going to show you that they care. Yeah. The Lions, every year they get a little, a little bit better. You know, maybe they're not quite there yet, but they don't just lay down and accept that they're, the, they're a bad it. team. Beat them, beat them, beat This is beat just, it, it, everything was just chaos. And, and what you looked at yesterday, really, with, with Rippin and the offensive players, it's so much bigger than Russ. So I don't have a problem with them moving on from him. I, I don't really root for people to get fired. Like, that's not, that's not a thing. Dave's right. He's going to get compensated. The rest of his coaching staff is not going to be in such a, a convenient position to right. be paid to go away. Right. So there are, you know, casualties throughout the organization when it comes to jobs that are bigger than just the head coach. The Broncos had to make a drastic move because it is a drastically bad situation. But for me, it starts and it stops with your quarterback. I think about this. Since the turn of the century, no head coach has gotten fired within his first year for exclusive football reasons. You can look last year at the Jags. That wasn't exclusively football-related. 2007, Bobby Petrino left the Falcons you know. to, go to, uh, to go to Arkansas with coach the Razorbacks in college. Oh, but yeah. since the turn of the century, no head coach has been fired in his first year for exclusively football reasons. That's a Russ issue. We've seen bad head coaches with bad records. Dan Campbell, Steve Wilkes, amongst several others. But to not make it through year one, to me, that's not just a hackett thing. I understand the culture is bad. I get all that. But quarterbacks, just as well as coaches, Shady, they can turn a culture. Yeah. I've seen quarterbacks, when you didn't necessarily like the coach in Philadelphia, let Nick Foles be back there gunslinging. Let Mark Sanchez be back there gunslinging. Let Mike Vick be back there gunslinging. All okay. quarterbacks you played under, you didn't have to like the coach. Yeah. Because the culture was set by the QB. So that's where I am with these Broncos. See, but I, I, I'm going to go the opposite way here. Okay. Because I don't believe that, right? I'm going to go with this. So, so Justin Fields, right? In the beginning of the year, he was throwing for like 80 yards a game. He was playing bad, mm -hmm. right? What did the coach do? They played to his strengths, start getting him out. They rolled him out, let him scramble a little bit more. I, I didn't see no change in the Denver Broncos offense, right? So, Russell Wilson, he's a guy that plays off script. That's his thing. Yes, sir. Plays outside the pocket. I didn't see no, 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 no read options with the runs. I didn't see no, no getting him out on the perimeter to give him a pass sure. or run option. Sure. I didn't see that. I didn't see nothing for you to help out your struggling $160 million quarterback. But whose fault is that when, remember, week eight, middle of the season, okay. Russell Wilson pulls a hammy. Right. You got a 33-year-old quarterback who got a hammy pulled. He doing high knees on airplanes, remember, oh, we everybody. Forgot about we that. forgot yeah. about that. Come on, man. Like, like, whose fault is that, 2-5? You already know. You said about it with the Eagles and Jalen Hurts. They got to protect his shoulder when he comes back. They probably won't run as many okay. designated QB keepers. If you got a quarterback that's getting up there in age based upon mobility, pulling hamstrings, he can only well, be so mobile. Well, first, anybody can pull a hamstring, first of all. And second of all, like, like we don't know how severe it really was. No, we he don't. only missed the game, right? Yep. Yeah, so it probably wasn't that bad. Whatever it is, right? I, I think Russell would, 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 would care. Hey, look, I know I'm banged up, but if you can find some other plays for me to get better, I would do that. And I don't feel bad for uh, the thing. I don't feel bad for hacking at all. First of all, quick story, when we let Rex Ryan go, I'm like, because I like Rex Ryan. I'm like, man, I'm like, dang, Rex. Um, I'll send him a text. Like, Buffalo yo, Bills, 2000. Buffalo Bills. Yeah. What year? What year? Uh, Set the scene I think five. 20, 2015. 2015 yeah. Buffalo Bills. So, right. um, whenever we let him go, I'm like, I'm like, coach, man, dang, you did a great job. What's your fault? The players didn't play for you. We got a younger crew. He's good with, like, older, you know, players. Mm -hmm. He said, ah, Shady don't feel bad for me, Shady. They still owe me $30 million. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm like, I'm thinking like, oh, he don't care. I said, well, congrats and good luck. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Joy, let me come to you then because congrats. this is an interesting conversation. <laughs> Rex Ryan had already accomplished so much. Yeah, that yeah, coach yeah. for the New York Jets beat Bill Belichick, beat Peyton Manning, beat several greats in a route to going to AFC Championship games. Nathaniel Hackett, this might be his last coaching opportunity, at least for half a decade, you know, for a little bit. He'll have to reset. Where do you stand on who's at fault, Russ or Hackett, or do you even feel bad for Hackett? Where do you stand in the, in the <clears throat> mind of all of this? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel bad for the entire coaching staff. Again, Hackett's going to still make some money. It's not like he was you know, he doing is. a volunteer service here, but <laughs> there are coaches who yeah, make a lot of way less money yeah. than he does who are also going to have to look for jobs in the future and have this as their most recent uh, mm -hmm. resume. resume. Mark. Yep. So that, that's going to affect them as well. But the interesting thing about this, and we don't have a lot of evidence, and I know you know what I'm about to say. That's why you did that lean forward. <laughs> the, the game that Russ didn't play in most recently, they, they didn't look terrible. Elaborate, please, for the viewers at home, because they're curious as to what you're alluding to. 24 uh -oh. points. Uh-oh. Wasn't a great opponent, but... 
It happened. I mean, it, it did happen. Mark Slareth, Broncos, two-time Super Bowl champ, offensive guard, went on three. three-time Super Bowl yeah, champ. Let me not take one, one with from Washington, too. Yeah, I, I don't want to show him ranks. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. um, went on air and said that the offense functions better under the backup quarterback than it yes, does under Russell Wilson. Mm. I agreed with that sentiment. I believe the same thing of the Arizona Cardinals offense when they had Colt McCoy as opposed to Kyler Murray. Not saying that Brett is better than Russ or right. Colt is better than Kyler, but for whatever whatever reason, the offenses function better. Dave, you are a spin it forward kind of guy, an NFL writer for the last 10, 11 years. Where can and where do the Broncos go from here? And see, like, if you feel bad for Nathaniel Hackett and, and you wish more of this rested on Russ, that's that's the long game. Like, we, I mean, we got long memories, right? We'll remember this stuff into the future. And that's what happens next, because for my money, Everything the Broncos do from here on out needs to be about getting more out of Russell Wilson. That's it has That's to, right. That's it has right. to center on that. I, me personally, we talk about this all the time. They can do whatever they want. I can't imagine how you hire a head coach who doesn't have an offensive background and preferably a play calling background, like a guy who can come in, watch some tape and say, this is what Russ does. Well, these are the personnel groupings. He lost a step. We can offset it this way. This is what I'm thinking. Great point, this Dave. is the run passing yeah. splits, all that stuff. And, and I'll hire a quarterback's coach that can work with him that he respects, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like line number one needs to be turning Russell Wilson into a functional quarterback. We, I mean, we can, we'll can we shelve the MVP thing. Like, he might not ever be that guy again, but if he's even functional, this could be a pretty good team. That's where it has to start. And from here on out, if it doesn't, now you're now now we're really talking about Russell Wilson's legacy and yep. like, oh, my God, how good was this guy really? Like, why did he get this contract? And how are the Broncos ever going to deal with it? That, that's, that's for 2023. And, and I think, like, starting immediately – that's why the Broncos have to do everything in their power to salvage the situation. Not with just them. the contract, the picks too. Oh, all mm. of it. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be harder for them. You know, it's easy to say like, oh, he needs a better offensive line. Maybe draft some receivers because you don't know what the future holds for Jerry Judy, et cetera. What are they going to do that with? Yeah, that, like they, they have hamstrung themselves a little bit. And, and that's a great point. You said the, the first interview question should be for me, the head coach of the Broncos, how can you, you know, help Russell Westbrook or Wilson, Wilson yep. be the best player he can be? How can we get Russ to be back cooking again, right? How can we get him back That's in the kitchen? The that that should be the main question. It absolutely should be, but what if there is no answer? Reason I say this mm. is, Joy made a great point. Nathaniel Hackett worked with a back-to-back -back NFL MVP. At receiver, they had Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, K.J. Hamler. They came into the season with Melvin Gordon at running back and Javante Williams at running yeah. back. What else do you want? You gave Russ $250 million. What more brilliant, young, offensive mind can you find out there? What more young, ex uh, exponentially growing receiving core can you find? What more young, great offensive running back tandem can you find? I do not know Styles, what else can man. they do. It, they can do it. Uh, uh, the uh, Miami did it, right? The Dolphins did it. True. They found a good coach. True. Tool was this. Now he that. Like, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know what I'm saying. It's like, hey, oh, no, no, no. I'm saying, Tool's having a good, he having a good game. He has a good game. We're rolling down well, We see what I'm saying? Like, you can find a coach. That fits a player. I got a name I'm going to tease with. Oh, God. Kellen Moore. Subscribe here to get the latest from Speak and go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.